I first set up a limited company um, back in 1986 and I was thinking about it, I've probably set up three or four since then and I've been on the boards of various organizations um, totaling around uh, I think about ten and I've I've chaired, I've vice chaired and I've I've rescued a couple of organizations from financial oblivion um, and I think all of them have one way or another made a surplus but in the world in which I work uh, we don't really call it a profit because I'm a I think what they call a social entrepreneur. I work in the, the non-profit sector or the charitable sector. And um, fundamentally, I, I've, I've been, most of my life, I've been a theatre director. And uh, you're probably wondering why I'm here talking to you, and I'll, I'll get to that a bit later. Um, I think there's a movement towards and I'll be interested to hear what my, my, my peers say about this, but I think there's a movement at the moment towards enterprises uh, being not just for financial and economic purposes, but also having social and other purposes. Um, when Adair Turner says uh, critically that something like 80% of banking is socially useless, and Ed Miliband talks about in effect, good capitalism and bad capitalism, and, and other politicians and candidates for the job at the Bank of England and business people, the, uh, the chief executive of John Lewis, which is a, in a way a social enterprise but is also a very, very successful enterprise. Um, a number of these people are saying at the moment, actually making money is not just what we're about. We're also here to benefit society one way or another. And that may be by employing lots of people and, and making the wheels of society turn. It may be putting things back in other ways. And I think there's an interesting movement at the moment after perhaps 30 years when uh, we've been told that money making, money making, money making is the only thing. Um, there's an interesting movement towards uh, what I term the triple bottom line, and many of you may have come across this, many of you may, some of you may not. The triple bottom line talks about the, uh, the financial, the, or the economic, the social and the environmental sustainability of an organization. And for me, that makes a lot of sense because I think if you, if you hit those three bottom lines, if you do all of those satisfactorily, then you've got an organization that contributes in a number of ways and is more likely to be economically sustainable, as financially sustainable, as well as the other areas of sustainability. <coughs> the Creative Carbon Scotland, uh, I, a few years ago I decided that I'd done all I could uh, directing plays and producing shows and th that's a bit more on that in a minute. Um, so I went and took the MSc in Carbon Management at Edinburgh University um, in the very business school that we're in now, although not the same building. Um, and I did that because I could see that there was a need for the voluntary sector, the sector that I work in, to engage in addressing climate change in working towards a more sustainable Scotland and a more sustainable world. Um, and I realized that, I did a bit of marketing really, I realized that the knowledge I had of the cultural sector and the voluntary sector, um, combined with the knowledge that I would gain during the carbon management course, uh, would provide a, a unique a unique selling point. I would have something that almost nobody else uh, had. And now I am in the position where I'm pretty sure that I know more than anybody else in the cultural sector in Scotland and to some extent in the UK uh, about climate change and carbon management. And I'm pretty sure that I know more than most people within the carbon management world about the cultural sector in Scotland. I can translate between the two and whilst it's not quite a, a need, it's still a want to some extent, um, I am doing my best to turn it into a need where people require the services that we offer. And what Creative Carbon Scotland does is it provides, it facilitates carbon management and increasing environmental sustainability uh, within organizations working within the cultural sector. So we facilitate carbon management projects. We're uh, training 
Uh, we're providing training and providing a framework so that the cultural sector organizations that we work with can measure and report their carbon emissions. Uh, we are working with them, encouraging them to use the the contacts they have, if you like, to persuade a wider population uh, and encourage a wider population to change their behaviors. Um, the, the cultural sector is quite a it's a big sector, actually. There are three point, I think, 3.6 billion pounds worth of sector in Scotland. Um, cultural organisations, I'll put this the other way around, around 90% of the population engage with, attend some sort of cultural event during the year. Um, they go to the cinema, they go to the theatre, they go to a concert, they go to a museum or an exhibition or whatever. So there's an awful lot of people out there who we can talk to. And... My, my inkling is and was, was and is, and it's being strengthened, is that cultural organizations talk to people about values, they talk about emotions, they talk about ideas. And it's, it's those things rather than information that encourages people to change their behavior. Um, so we are encouraging the organizations that we work with to talk to their audiences, to encourage them to change their patterns of behavior, maybe about attending a cultural event, and we hope that that will bleed into wider behavior change. But at the same time, the thing that I've learned is that it's not just encouraging people to change their behavior, it's also changing your behavior, which enables them to change theirs. So whilst working with those organizations, we are, uh, we're saying, if you change the way that you are, if you change the, uh, the time at which you put on your performances, if you uh, work with local transport providers, then people will be able to get to you more sustainably and so on. So that's a little bit of the work we do. There's one side of it which is very practical carbon management work, and there's another which is about hearts and minds.